My name is Murray Penner, and this is my story. I was born in a uh, small town in uh, Ontario, Canada. Grew up as number seven of seven kids. We had a very restrictive religious background that we're from. Uh, my father was a minister when I was a young boy. Uh, there was a lot of rules and regulations that that we grew up with as far as no TV, no radio, real plain cars, uh, no alcohol, no tobacco, no dating. As I grew up that way, I never really thought anything of it, never questioned it, because you're taught not to question. The environment we grew up in, we mostly, mostly associated with people that went to our church and not a, a lot of what the, the people called the world. Um, we, we were sheltered from that a lot. But as I grew older, um, it, it, it never was when I, when I observed the people around me that were Christians, they never seemed to be happy Christians. They were scared Christians. They were trying their best to get to heaven, but it was always a daily battle. It was always struggling, trying to be good enough to get in. When I was eight years old, my family moved to Alabama. It was a continuation of what I was taught there in Ontario too, that God was to be feared and revered. Uh, there was never a time when you felt like you were good enough. I grew up with the thought that the Lord was trying to figure out a way of keeping me out. Well, I joined the church, uh, got baptized into the church when I was 13 and stayed very faithful to all the rules and regulations till I was probably about 16 or 17 and started to look around me and started to look outside of the box that I was in and realized that people were out there, there was a life out there, and I started just longing for more than what I had and started rebelling against the rules and regulations. When I was 18, uh, the ministers were, we were in revival times, and they called me and asked me if I'd be willing to have a meeting with them. And they showed up there at my parents' house in a, in a uh, big four-door car, it had little baby moons on the hubcaps, and uh, they asked me to come sit in the back seat with them. It was, three of them and then one of me and they were all looking at me and started asking me questions about my activities and was I doing this and was I doing that and you know was I smoking was I drinking was I dating you know and I don't I it was kind of a weird conversation because I was like yeah absolutely I'm doing all that I didn't deny anything I just I was like you just please let me out of that box that you've got me in when the ministers got done talking to me that uh that day in the car, they had told me we're going to have to excommunicate you from the church because some of the things I'd done as far as some of my activities, there was only one way to ever get in good standings with the church again, and that would be to ex be excommunicated and then reaccepted into the church. Some years later, I was at the beach and ended up meeting my wife now, Tracy, and uh, her and I started dating from that point on, got married uh, two and a half years later and which was in 1989 and just lived a very normal life it, it wasn't a, a godless life but we didn't really pray a lot didn't go to church at all we had some neighbors of ours alan and laura alan lived right across the road from me and uh, through the years uh, he had invited me to go to uh, the church that they go to from time to time and uh, we had tried going there. We, we thought it was okay. We didn't really feel a connection, didn't really feel that spark of, wow, I can't wait to go there again. And then a short time later, we saw them at uh, my next door neighbor's birthday party and they were quite excited. Alan and Laura were quite excited about a new church they were being a part of. It was called True North. And they said, y'all gotta come and see, you gotta come check it out. So we showed up one Sunday morning there and uh, it was, uh, Somewhat intimidating to me right at first. Everybody's real casual, you know, and Steve doesn't tuck his shirt in, and people have flip-flops on, and, you know, there's a drummer up front, you know, and people are singing, and just, it looked so casual to me that I wasn't really sure if if that was where I was going to uh, belong in or fit in at all either. I just thought it might be a little bit too much for me. It took me, I don't know, I wouldn't think more than probably several times of going there and I started realizing that these people really seem to have something I don't have. They 
they something I wasn't grew, uh, brought up with at all, that people were joyful in worship. They, they loved worshiping God. I have two kids, Megan and Avery, and I was watching them grow up in the environment that we were trying to raise them in, not making a lot of rules and regulations, but trying to guide them. And uh, especially with Avery getting a little older, he'd got very involved in Element at church. I saw him volunteering to go, saying, all right, you know, I want to go to this. I want to be a part of this. And I, I look back on the way I was raised, and I look back on the way he was being raised, and I saw such a complete and total contrast to the way he felt about God and the way I would grew up feeling about him. I watched my daughter, Megan, she would pray to God as if they were best friends, you know, that she would just talk to him like he was a person in the room. And, and it was a communication that they were having. The transition started happening for me. My wife, Tracy, and Avery had got baptized on the uh, same day on a Sunday morning. And I felt a lot of resistance for a long time. Didn't want to be baptized, because I'd already been baptized once, and I felt like it was somewhat redundant. One Sunday morning, we were having dunked services there at True North, and uh, I just didn't want to, but I, I really felt kind of a need to. And, you know, I kind of like looked at God, you know, in my mind, and I said, you know, well, there you go, you know, but I've tried to come up with every reason why I shouldn't, but I'm out of excuses. So I went ahead and went down and got dunked that morning. Don't get me wrong, having a changed relationship with God, a different view of Him doesn't make life perfect. I still have a lot of failures and shortcomings. I wish I did things different. I wish that I didn't give in to temptation, do things I shouldn't do. But what it has done is there's a center, there's a core to our life that we didn't used to have. It's just such a contrast to, to move away from religion and to move to more of just a God-based life and a, and a God-based uh, feeling of how we approach life. And that the one big thing that we have that I didn't feel like I had before was a God that's trying to figure out how to bring us in and not keep us out.